Let's think. I love those words. So you've got you labeled this as polar. Okay, so all of them are polar. Okay. Excellent. That's right. that's right. No, that's right. Yeah. I love that you have the partial negatives and partial positives. This looks awesome. This looks really, really good. But now you want to think like how does why what? Yeah, right. Why? Like why did we see this one evaporate fastest and this one slowest? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. This was the last full week before our holiday break. It was a very long week, um, a good week, but very long. It seemed to really drag on. Um, there was a lot that went on this week, so that's why I'm surprised it felt so long. Um, I actually was finishing my Borax Crystal Ornament Lab that I was talking about last week. And then I introduced my unit on intermolecular forces using a phenomenally experience. I did talk about this last year. Um, the students did an evaporation race and um, basically they took these different liquids, threw them on the board, and um, they analyzed the different evaporation rates and they were ultimately trying to construct an explanation for what they were observing. They spent time um, drawing the Lewis structures of these molecules, indicating partial and negative charges, and trying to indicate like how do these molecules interact and what ultimately will determine the rate of evaporation with these different liquids. They did a great job. Their models were really, really good. Um, I feel like in the past it has been a little bit more challenging for the students to participate in this phenomenal experience, but for whatever reason this year they did a really great job with their models. They definitely were trying to explain it and I heard a lot of good stuff. I do remind them that the first model is not always going to be the best obviously because we're still accruing information, but as we go through the unit the models will get better and better. So I'm very impressed with the work that they've done so far. After that, um, I did have a turnkey class, and that was kind of the inspiration behind this video. So my turnkey class that I was teaching was on QR codes in the classroom and basically how I incorporate QR codes in the classroom to make my life easier, to make the kids' life easier. So this video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I use QR codes in my scavenger hunts. Um, scavenger hunts are really easy with QR codes. All you really need is a list of clues. You need to take those clues and code them into a QR code and then post the QR codes around the school. Um, if you wanted to, you could of course, you know, if you want to have your students be a little bit more in close quarters, you could absolutely post them in your classroom and hide them in your classroom. I just thought it would be nice for my students to kind of get out. It'd be a nice change of pace. So um, what I did was I had a bunch of um, clues that I made. Um, Compound Interest has a really nice set of, um, they, he calls it an advent calendar of um, different uh, chemistry of poinsettias and chemistry of bells. And um, they have a whole bunch of different holiday themed, chemistry themed things. And um, so I was able to use a lot of the information that he compiled in his infographics in constructing my clues. So um, what I did was I constructed my clues and then I used, um, a, they ha there are some online like QR code scavenger hunt app things that will convert your text and do it all for you. But I wasn't a fan about the way it looked so I decided to do my own. So I created all these QR codes individually. So I made a total of nine different clues. There's nine different QR codes. And um, you'll see that in each QR code there's a symbol. So the symbol corresponds to the clue that they need to record the answer to. So this was the sheet that the students used to walk around and find the different QR codes. And then as soon as they found the QR code, they looked in the center and they saw the symbol. And so that indicated where they had to write their answer for that particular clue. How the students win is basically the students that finish the fastest and they have the most correct answers, they're the ones that win. And I did have prizes, um, I always try to give prizes when I can, and so I actually made cupcakes last night and I brought them in and those were the prizes for the students who won. And it was a really fun time, it was really nice to see it and I think I think the students enjoyed it because at the end they were like, uh, can we do this again? And I was like, of course we can. <laughs> so it was really cool to hear them say that. I, um, I'm happy that they enjoyed it so much. I said, we'll, we'll definitely do it again. And my wheels are already turning thinking about like, how can I incorporate QR codes and like scavenger hunts into my reviews? So I'm getting there. The other thing that was fun for my kids today is I surprised them with something. Um, I actually made my students something over summer as I was preparing for them and I shared it on my Instagram story but you may not remember it. 
Um, so Sticker Mule is a company that I use to print like custom stickers. And if you've ever come to um, any of my professional developments, like if you came to my New Jersey Science Convention professional development, I actually had some phenomenal um, certified educator stickers that I gave out. And so I designed them and then Sticker Mule will print them. So I designed a sticker for my students using Sticker Mule. And so you can see it's really awesome. One of the um, terms of endearment I call my students are chem beasts because chemistry is a difficult class and I want them to remember that I believe in them. And so I made these for the kids and I gave them to them today and they were just so excited and I it made me feel so good because I, I wanted to make it official. Like they are chem beasts, whether they believe it or not, once a chem beast, always a chem beast. And um, I just really want them to know how much I appreciate them, how much I value their effort, their respect, and um, how they're really such an amazing part of our classroom, our, our, our classroom environment. They, they deserve it because they are really great kids and I feel really fortunate to be their chemistry teacher this year. So with that said, I am going to get out of here and I'm going to enjoy my break because I need a break. <laughs> we all do. Um, so I hope you got your grading done. I hope you don't have a lot of work to do over break. And most of all, I hope you enjoy the time that you're spending with your family and your friends. And um, I look forward to catching up with you in 2020. Thank you so much for watching.